Hey there, everybody, and welcome back to Black Arrow Gaming. I'm Bob, back for another episode of Age of Wonders 4. Uh, episode's coming out a little bit later this week. Wasn't sure if I was going to get one out this weekend because of the Memorial Day holiday, but I think I can do a, uh, a shorter one. I should have time for that today. So this might be a bit shorter than my usual uh, length episodes, but I wanted to get at least some done. Steve's got to get his dragon slaying in for the week. Um, well... I don't know if we'll actually slay any dragons. We'll see if Basra Khan shows up. The interesting thing is, I know he's been back for some time on this western front, but I haven't seen him in a while, so uh, he could pop out at any time. But uh, in the meantime, I'm glad to dispose of his minions. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing in this episode. Got a pretty big battle coming up here. I do have some feedback I want to go through uh, from you guys. Uh, first off, uh, from Chris Lighthawk, a good suggestion for any heroes that have... Um, uh, any, like, mass buff spells. Mass Rejuvenation's a perfect example when Steve has it. Probably worth picking up um, Bolstering Support, as that hero ability gives defense, uh, or, I'm sorry, resistance upgrades. Let me double check just to make sure I'm, I'm saying this right. It should be in the, uh, well, it's actually not there. There it is. It's in the, the magic line. Support abilities grant one bolstered resistance to effective infected units. When you um, add up how many units something like Mass Rejuvenation can cover, which has a 2x radius, but even for buffs that only have a 1 hex radius, that's pretty good. That That's a lot of extra resistance when you add it all up. So maybe worth grabbing that when Steve levels up. Um, yeah, and I should, and those don't really require any investment uh, into the tree. Oh, I was looking at abilities I already had. That is under support. Never mind. Um, yeah, that's under the support abilities. And it doesn't require any investment in the support abilities, as far as I know. Um, if you just get the tome, you get the skill. And I think that's all there is to it. So very nice to have. I will probably pick that up. Um, from N. Spalding, uh, Mage Locks and Dragoons already ignore 50% of enemy defense when using range attacks. This is something I haven't... Uh, acknowledged and, and didn't even consider um, up until now, but thank you for pointing this out. Uh, yeah, if and on these guys or my mage locks, they have this uh, piercing ability um, on their attacks, which causes me to ignore 50% of the target's defense. What this means is that Sunder Defense doesn't get me quite as much out of it because I'm already ignoring a portion of their defense. It still helps, though. That's not to say it doesn't help, but these guys are actually a pretty good counter to units that have higher defense just because of their ability to punch through it, which is nice because all these guys have that ethereal form or whatever um, that I can never find. Astral Attunement, which gives them ethereal, and that's giving them extra defense. So basically, effectively, this is only giving them an extra one defense against me because I'm ignoring half of it. So uh, while Sundering, this defense is still useful. Uh, it is nice to know that I have something that's helping me punch through some of it. And of course, it's still useful against anything else that doesn't have piercing. And I still have quite a few weapons that don't. So uh, I'm wondering if the cannons do, though. I don't remember. Uh, they do not have piercing. It's just the guys who fire bullets, I think. So yeah. I still have quite a lot of physical hitters, so still helps. But yeah, just figured I'd throw that out there. From Emil Soderman and Queen Wormline, the Devolved Trick won't work on Mage Banes because you can't cast it in the if the Mage Bane is in battle. That's a great point. I was talking about trying to get Mage Banes um, in the last episode as a possible unit to bring into battle against Norbag. Trying to figure or a Bazarkan, trying to figure out if there's any way that I could get them. There is not. I was hoping one of these guys um, over here was. There is not with uh, by casting Devolve because. Um, as I failed to acknowledge in the last episode, you can't cast Devolve in combat if a Mage Bane is in it because there is a Mage Bane. So you can't Devolve it because you can't cast spells because they block it. But um, there is possibly another way. Queen Wormline did mention that a Staff of Polymorph could work. And I believe uh, they may have already taken a look at this on my behalf. Um, I can't actually... I don't think I can go in and look. I think there was one magic item that I'm missing for that. I forgot to write down what it was. Uh, we'll wait until Kevin's crown is done and maybe see about getting a staff of polymorph. Although, honestly, I, I probably won't make one unless I spot a mage bane somewhere, because otherwise it's not something I really need that badly. Um, also from Queen Wormline, uh, Final Banishment from the Tome of Severing does not destroy hero corpses. 
didn't realize that, but I was talking about possibly getting from the Tome of Severing Final Banishment here to get rid of uh, of corpses like, you know, Jormag or, well, really both the dragons that have the Ankh and the Phoenix, the revivability on them, the enemy dragons that I've been fighting. But it specifies right there in the description that it does not apply to hero corpses. So um, the best way to prevent them from reviving is still just going to be the old fashioned stand on them trick. So uh, yeah, good call there. Um, that makes Tome of Severing a little bit less uh, tempting for me. But there are other options, as Queen Wormline pointed out. I could consider the Tome of the Chaos Lord for Demonic Onslaught, which gives Killing Momentum and Hastened for three turns, which might make for an interesting combination with my Dragoons. Um, again, let's hop back into the Tome Library here for a moment. Uh, if we look at my options, I believe I have enough Chaos Affinity to get the Endgame Chaos Tomes instead of the Earth ones, or the Materium ones. Um, they are... Tome of, no, it's, I was looking at the wrong set. Yeah, Tome of the Chaos Lord for Demonic Onslaught. All attacking units gain Killing Momentum and, ha and Hasten for three turns. Killing Momentum is interesting because the unit regains an action point when killing another unit with a magic, melee, or physical range attack. Um, I don't know, and none of us are certain how this works with, um, none of the people in the comments from last week quite knew how this would work with the, uh, what are they called again? My my horse, my dragoons. Because when these guys shoot or unit or attack, they don't lose any of their movement points. So if they have killing momentum and say like the guy goes and hits something with his sword and kills it, does he get like, does he still retain all that extra movement but get an extra attack on top of that? Because if he does, and he's also hastened, the dude could kill a unit and then run halfway across the battlefield with no worry about getting hit by anything and then shoot his shot from anywhere else which could be an unbelievably powerful combination with the dragoons but some of it's going to be like order of operations in terms of when these bonuses all apply so it's probably still a good tome to go for i think because um and i'm going to have to it'll be some time before i can actually pick this so we got some time to think about it but um I've got, because I've got, like, I'm, I'm only at my first research in the Tome of Warding, but uh, I think I would have to, I, I don't think I can go straight for it. I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to see what's available. I was thinking these Tomes only required, like, affinity in a specific magic spell, but this one might actually require tier 4 tomes like so I might need like the tome of the demon gate and tome of chaos channeling I'm not I don't remember 100% sure for some I'm thinking it's just uh, affinity is all that matters but I could be wrong about that we'll have to take a look when I can choose my next tome um, although I'm sure you guys will probably tell me before then I can never remember uh, how the rules work um, when it comes to tome selection but that's all for uh, that's all for this uh, set of comments and feedback let's jump into some gameplay and get started with the big battle right here which i have been so looking forward to doing again in the last episode we were able to kind of these guys kind of walked a little bit into my territory and importantly i have a spell jammer back here and that's kind of the main threat that this dragon poses his ability to spam spells and uh, cause problems that way particularly with cascading power which does lightning damage each turn every time the guy casts a spell but he can cast half as many as long as we're fighting on my territory so we're going to run on over here uh get these guys close and go ahead and punch this guy in the face and attack that stack that's only got the four units on it this does say it's a low risk battle i do want to see how the auto handles this um my other option was to wait a little longer to get magical wards, but I think I can manage this. Yeah, they, they, the AI didn't do very well on this one, but uh, I'm gonna do this one myself. Kind of figured I'd probably have to. Um, I believe I can handle this. I still do want to be, well, I don't know. Do I really need to be that aggressive on this one? Because he's got half as many spell casts. Did he drop the one that he loves to do where he always stuns a group of units? No, he didn't. That's interesting. Okay. 
last several times I've fought this guy, he's are he's always stunned one group of units before the battle even really starts. But he didn't do that this time. Um, see, I want to, I think, hit this army. More of these armies here. These guys don't worry me as much. They don't have as much damage output aside from the one phase beast there. Um, the more dangerous stuff, I think, is down here with these uh, spell guys and uh, I forget what they're called the hunt spell breakers and there's another one there and then we got this guy here plus another phase beast and the astral serpent which is more of just an annoyance than a huge threat but I think I'm going to go kind of straight at these guys oh wait he did stun lock a group he got these three down here okay well in that case we're going to form kind of a line and I already have Spell Tempered Shield, so this Exemplar can kind of protect units adjacent to it from spell attacks. I think I'm going to take advantage of that, try to bunch some units up over here, and get ready to hit these guys pretty hard. The Spellbreakers can AoE me if I do this, but I'm going to just protect my units with magic, and uh, hopefully that works well enough. Because I can put the um, bird here, Put these guys here probably a little bit away from that thing actually it doesn't really matter I want the war breed a bit farther forward so I'll go kind of like that we'll be aggressive but we'll do it on this side down here we'll leave Jormag in there so they might target that group but that's okay if they do um, I want I want this unit far enough away that that phase beast doesn't threaten it. Um, so he can teleport pretty much anywhere that he can move, but he has to have his phase. I could swear phase, you can't move before using it, but the uh, this right here doesn't have all three bubbles next to it, which makes me think he can. That, that can't be right. I, I'm... I'm like 99% sure those things can't move and still phase on the same turn. So I'm going to I'm going to put the fairies here for that reason. They should be safe. And then I can use these guys and bring them kind of over to the center and again protect nearby units and then this whole group can come down this way. Yeah including you. And she's one of my main damage dealers, so I want to get her to where most of the action's going to be happening as soon as I can. And that looks okay to me. Of course, these guys are just kind of stuck here for now. Okay, I'm not sure... Didn't catch what he just hit me with. Cosmic Aberration. Another big AoE. That cannon may not live through this battle, but that's that's okay if the cannon goes. I don't care that much. Okay, we took a pretty nasty hit there. I think Steve can patch that up. Um, oof. Ow. Maybe not those guys, though. They just straight up got wrecked. That was my healer. <laughs> All right, Steve's gonna have to drop a heal on that group right there. And hopefully we can punch Brack pretty hard right here. Uh, all right. Yeah, definitely think I need to heal. And get some regen going on these guys. Um, I wanna make sure that I can kill this thing. Wait, no, that's phased, or that's done. It's refuge thing, so I can't do anything about him right now. Um, Warbreed, what do we do with you? Push him back, displace and replace. Um, could get a free elemental out. And I could also try to kill these spellbreakers. These guys, these spellbreakers right here are pretty darn vulnerable. I think I'm going to just try to kill them now. Probably with my hero. Oh, they got a phase beast on my 
Dragoons here. Well, actually, my Dragoons... I could, I could cancel it. You know what, that tank, or this cannon, is entirely expendable, so I'm just gonna knock those guys off. And uh, I might actually zap them with her. Yeah, I would really like to get rid of one of the phase beasts because they could, they have the potential to dish out a lot of damage every turn. Um, all right, we're gonna take these guys here. They've lost a couple of their units, so they won't really do full damage. But maybe a flank attack would be enough. We'll have to see. I'll move them here and see what kind of damage they can do with a flank. Okay, that is not a flank. So what about here? This would essentially be sacrificing them to kill the phase beast, but these guys are easy enough to... Well, that's still not a flank, huh? What is going on here? Why can't they be flanked? They unflankable. I don't see a reason why they would be. Oh, they're in defense mode. Okay. I must have. They must have triggered defense mode when I hit them once, and they teleported. Not sure what the rules are on that. All right. Well, uh, uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move these guys down here. Um, how? What's the range on this? That's a one one range. Okay. I'm gonna move. Let's move these guys. The elemental. The earth elemental here. I'll move these guys here. We're gonna heal. The Dragoon. The Dragoon can then run around and do a decently good shot here now that he's back at full health. This will let me finish this thing off and just get a tier four out of the fight, which makes me feel a little better. And then I'm going to use these guys to land a flank on them. Now, these guys, by doing this, are going to lose a pretty big chunk of their health, and it's going to significantly impair their damage output, so I might not actually need to totally finish them off, but there's a good chance I will anyway. And then, of course, they can fall back. I almost forgot about that, but yeah, they can still move, so that's pretty handy. I'm going to move them down here, too. Uh, I've got another healer here, uh, which is good because I lost one in that mess. I might use him on the Warbreed, just to give the Warbreed a little bit of wiggle room here. He's also got a power cleave he can do. He's probably I'm probably going to do that with that Warbreed. Um, the Warbreed also does heal over time, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Uh, and then the question is, does Jormag want to try to use a breath attack on stuff? I think the answer to that question is probably yes. Let's get this guy out first and do a little damage. I can, let's see, if I go here, I can flank him. My storm, spe my storm spirit would subsequently get fried by everything though, and I don't really want to do that. I don't want to just throw away that storm spirit. Did I just call him a storm sister? Because if I did, that's a throwback to Age of Wonders 3. Um, you know what? I think I want those fairies to be healed more than anything else. The Warbreed, he can kind of heal on his own to some extent. But those fairies, I need them for damage output. In fact, I might just straight up focus fire the phase beast with him. I really, really, really would like to get rid of that phase beast. All right, let's do a power cleave with this guy. So I think I'm going to do that regardless. That moves the phase beast. We'll see where he lands. He is right here. Okay, that one I can flank. I wonder why the other one I couldn't. Because they both attacked on this turn. A little odd, but I won't complain. Because um, it means I can fry this one with the fairies. And then probably just shoot it with these guys. Yeah. Alright, not bad. What's the angle of Jormag's breath attack? It goes 
out and then four. So if I moved your mag to this spot, I could catch quite a few enemies with their breath attack. I think I'm going to do that. Go right here. And then I can hit all that crap and maybe freeze some of it. Maybe playing a little risky with Jormag here again. I did freeze the phase beast, so I don't need to worry about it for a turn unless he has some way of dispelling it. Um, who do I have next? And I still have healing that I haven't used. Oh, my Balor and Steve back here, right. Which Steve actually didn't use his healing. Oops. I got caught up with other things. Uh, I could still get most most things in it there, including the war breed, which, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Question is, do I want to use Steve's mark on anything first? Is there anything that really needs to go? Um, I think I'm okay for now. I'll probably just get the Bowler up there and swing and hit this guy. You could also go hit him. Um, these guys also have their shot. These guys could kill with a melee attack, though. I'll probably use that and save their gun. Yeah, let's do that. Get rid of the phase beast. Then maybe maybe back off a little bit? I'm not sure. Um, no, what I'm going to do is... What kind of attacks do you have? You have a single lightning evocation. Those guys have lightning bolts. I'm thinking I'm going to put this guy over here and just park next to these things to prevent them from doing as many range attacks while moving the Balor forward. Um, yeah, actually, I already know pretty much for sure that's what I'm going to do. So, uh, Does this guy, will he break defense? No, he won't. These guys are going to take a hit when they move, but I'm okay with that. I want them right here, right where they can be a huge pain. And then we'll just turn them around and leave them on defense. Um, then I can move the Balor up. Hit this guy in the back. Can move this guy up and we'll probably try to shoot. Oh wait, no, that's Steve. I meant this guy. Uh, I don't know if he can actually shoot the, that stuff out there, but I will be able to use him. I'll tell you what, I'll use him to just get rid of this annoying shield guy that's in the middle of everything. Um, Who's left? We got the, those dragoons, which they don't they can't they don't have an attack. That one which does and could finish off the shield. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. Just get him out of the way. Uh, we got the uh, this guy who I would love to have deal with him. But the angle that he's going to leave himself at leaves me a little uncomfortable with all this other stuff over here. I think he would die. I would kind of want to get somebody on that thing, but I don't have the movement for it. At least I don't think I do. Maybe I may have a spell that can help here. We'll see. Okay. I don't think Steve's mark helps with anything here. So I'm going to save that for a future turn. I uh, will probably stick with my original plan of dropping a heal right here. Although I can move, if I'm smart about this, I can move uh, these guys into range of it, which oh. I will do. These guys too. Will they, they, will they be in range of it already? I think they will, but... No, depending on who I heal, they wouldn't be. If I do it there, they would be, or I could just move them, or I could just move these guys. It doesn't really matter. All right, let's do this. Since that army is the center point of all of this action, we will just give them a big heal right there. Now, can you imagine if that gave all of them an extra defense or resistance? That would be nice. Um, and then, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just deal with that Spellbreaker. Uh, the, the other option is for me to teleport, like Shocking Phase here. 
but it doesn't actually kill anything and I think it leaves me even more vulnerable. So we're just gonna go with this one and hope that he can last a turn. He does have regeneration, so there's that. Um, these guys, do they still have their shot? It's on... Blocked by Master Skirmisher. I don't remember if they actually used it. I don't think they did. But it's sometimes kind of hard to tell. All right, that Spellbreaker. I think it. I think it's on cooldown for those guys. Like this one, I know for sure still has it. So it's cooldown one. Who's one that I know shot? This guy did shoot this turn. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's a way to tell because it says cooldown one blocked by Master Skirmisher. And those guys definitely did shoot. And these guys I'm pretty sure didn't. But it gives me the same information when I highlight it. So I guess we'll just find out on the next turn. Um, I do want these guys to play defense here for now. Because this side's going to end up with, in a little bit of trouble, I think. Next unit, we've got these guys. Um, I'm going to move them up just to get them closer to this group here. And they can also benefit from the shields that this guy provides. In fact, I'm going to have them turn and face this direction because they can't do an opportunity attack regardless. Unfortunately, I can't do anything about that Sprawl Breaker back there. He can really mess something up if he wants to. If he can hit it anyway. Uh, the Dragoon may be able to prevent him from firing without moving once if I move him up. I'll do that. I'll just move them to there and see how that pans out. I think they won't do an opportunity attack, but I, I'm pretty sure they'll still force him to move. The rules with these guys I'm still getting kind of used to, but uh, yeah. And then we've got a spell. I was kind of thinking I might want to use Crushing Earth to try to stun something, depending on who is left. Um, Mental Mark is always useful as well, if I can get a big group into it. But um, I'm thinking I want to stun this guy is the most tempting one to me. Yeah, I'm just gonna do that. Oh sweet, we got the insta kill. All right, that makes me feel good. Okay, I didn't need to move that Dragoon forward after all, but he's already there, so. But I will absolutely take that insta kill. Oh crap, all my units are wet, that's not good. I'll leave my poor Warbreed alone. He's not gonna make it. It's okay, we'll replace him with more Dragoons. They're going to end up being a lot more resistant to the stuff this guy can throw at them anyway. I would really like to avoid losing that Shock guy though. Okay, we're getting, things are getting a little rough over there on that side, so we'll have to deal with that. Um, does Steve has a, have a Resurrect ability? I can never remember who does and doesn't. Steve does not, and I don't think this hero does either. So we can't pick anybody back up over here. Let's see, you are in a spot of trouble, aren't you? All right. Let's see, Steve's got shots now. Um, I think I wanna mark that hero right there, probably. If Steve can reach him with Mark. And he can't, at least not, at least not from where he's standing. He might be able to sprint and get it. Can he use a regular shot on him? All right, what I'm gonna do, I got an idea. We're gonna use sprint here. So I want to try to kill that hero, possibly with Steve. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop Steve's sprint. We're gonna move forward, mark this guy. That's bonus damage. Then if I wound him with anything or cast designate target on him, I can kill him. Um, 
Uh, those guys, my dragoons there, got frozen. That's not ideal. Oh, wait, I can really mess him up with them, too. Ooh, this cannon can do a nice line. Oh, wait, no, that's the wrong angle. Oh, I want you to shoot that line of units, not this guy. Not really what I want over there. I think I'll stick to the plan of using Steve to kill this hero because I kind of want her to be have the flexibility to do other things as needed. So yeah, we're going to do that. Question is, who am I going to soften this guy up with for Steve to finish him off? Fairy would work, but if I designate target and get extra marked and... You know what? I'm just going to use this. I think this is a good spot for this spell. The only other thing is that I kind of wanted to use mental mark on a group of units somewhere. Yeah, I think that's actually more important. This cannon just isn't being useful. They're just not good against this particular enemy. How much do you, can you guys kill this thing? That's maybe the first question I need to ask. I can I can harass all this stuff back here easily enough, so I'm not really worried about them. Um, at least not yet. I think I'm going to use the fairy to soften him up and have Steve just finish him off, because then Steve can turn around and heal somebody else. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Uh, I hope that was enough. I was not expecting to graze every time, and it was not enough. Okay, I'm going to hit him with this guy probably then, which will do another marked. That should guarantee that, I, that Steve can kill. Nice shot, sir. All right, let's get some healing on my Dragoon there in the middle. Oh, he's just out of range. All right, I guess we'll patch that one up then. This one may not make it out of this fight alive. Poor guy. All right. And then I can, I'll, I'll just melee attack this thing with these guys a bunch. Just try to kill him. God, it's under the earth. It's the big lion attack, right? If I go here and do this, I could catch. I'm thinking, I'm wondering if I could hit both of these guys with Sunder the Earth, but also catch the Tide Spirit in it and kill it. But the Tide Spirit's going to be resistant to fire, so it probably won't do as much damage. I think I'll just have him kill this thing and get the like reward thing that he gets for it. Yeah, I'm just going to do that. And then I'm going to have the eagle run here and bug that guy. And these guys can go here and bug this thing. Jormag's probably going to need to take out that thing in the middle. Although I think I may have them summon, use their battlefield summon to do it. Just to get an extra unit on the field. And then it's just going to be a matter of figuring out what the heck to do with everything that's going on over here. I can phase this guy, which might be useful in this situation. I can shocking phase over here. I think he can still attack after doing it too. Or I could do it here and then defend. That would pin these guys in a lot tighter. I think I'm going to do that. Try to help keep him alive. Yeah, that Spellbreaker doesn't really have anywhere good to move, so I'm just going to leave him. Because if he moves, he's going to get killed by something, I think. All 
All right. Uh, what else? Man, I wish I could move this thing before using it. All right. What I think I'm going to do here is focus fire the hero. Um, yeah, that's the plan. These guys need all the help they can get over here. So I'm going to focus fire the hero. I'm going to hit him with this cannon, which will break his defense. And then I can... I'm going to go ahead and just punch this guy a bunch with the earth elemental to use up his retaliation so that I can move these guys away and hit him with a marked and then zap him a bunch with this hero and start whittling him down. Um, I can actually mess these guys up pretty bad. I'll go ahead and do that with them. So if they get hit, there's just temporary hit points I'm losing out on. Oh, I kept for I forgot to cast Mental Mark on that group. I was going to do that before... Dang it, I was going to do this before uh, using my hero's magic attack. That was my plan, and I forgot to. I'm going to do it anyway. Just get that group of units, and then on the next turn I'll definitely kill... I don't think I would have killed him on this turn regardless, so it's not the end of the world. Just a minor inconvenience. I'm going to summon Jormag's Elemental here in case it's a fire one. Okay, it's a frost one. That's actually really good. That lets me finish this guy off. Alright, and then I think that's all. I could pull him back, but I don't know if I want to. I think I'll just change the direction he's facing. Uh, actually, no, I will pull him back a little. Yeah, we'll pull him back a little. Yeah, check that. And we'll see what they do. I think I'm going to lose that cannon on this turn, probably, and I'll probably lose this Dragoon. I'm anticipating. I don't know if this is going to come out much better than the auto did. It might be slightly better. I don't remember exactly who I lost in the auto. I kind of, I just saw a bunch of red and didn't like it, so I just <laughs> restarted. Um, okay, we're in a bit of trouble over here, but at least they're all marked and have sundered resistance, which I might want to do again before I think I can finish off everything that's over here, actually, on this turn. Do you have your gun back? You do. Excellent. Okay, so... Yeah, she can kill that guy now. And I think I'm going to just do that. Okay, so I actually don't think I need to mark these guys at all here. I might use another Crushing Earth to try to take out an important Tier 3, possibly the Storm Spirit there, because he's still at full health. Oh, you did manage to get away. All right. I will keep working on that guy. Didn't really get a chance to use the Balor's big attack here, but um, I might hit some friendlies with it here <laughs> to get him three kills. Um, we'll see. We'll see if I can... Oh, no, actually, I don't need to do that. I can move him back off, and I can get every... I can, yeah, I can clear everyone out of the way, and I think the Balor can get a trip kill here. If he moves here... Oh, this will be fun. Oh yeah, that's three more kills for this guy. Beautiful. Three times slaughter empowerment. All right, great. And now we got quite a few of them fleeing. We don't want to let them get away. All right, I'm gonna fly right here and punch this guy.
There's a lot of uh, nasty terrain in the middle of all this that I want to avoid touching, if I can. See, Jormag, just go here and claw at this guy a few times. There you go. Alright, the fairy can't quite hit what I wanted it to. I wanted to do the AoE attack, but it would catch my friendly in it, so decided not to do that. Uh, Steve, you can just continue to one-shot stuff. You're doing great. Okay, that's a pretty good chunk of damage right there I'll take. Um, these guys can ride around this way and just shoot. Yeah, I'm going to do that as long as there's nobody else here that can finish that guy off, but I don't think there is. Yeah, I'm like 90% sure there's not, so I'll just move him over this way, keeping him out of range of all the nasty stuff, and you can move here and take the shot. Uh, hopefully landing it. That's eh, graze. Nuts. Alright, well this guy may be able to finish him off. He's very difficult to hit, but there we go, we got it. And no, I'm going to track down everybody and finish them. I think I'm going to point blank this guy in the back here. There we go. Nobody gets away. He might get away because I don't think I can block him. But I could hit him with an attack. Anyone else touch this guy? All right, well, we want to use a spell to keep him from getting an arcane guard back. You know, we've got plenty of mana. Let's just, maybe if we, we can we ice coffin this guy? Yeah, that's a 90% chance to freeze. We'll take that. And I think it would have slowed if it had failed, so he wouldn't have gotten away either way. All right, I'm glad the cascading power didn't kill him. That would have kind of sucked. All right. There we go. Uh, it was a little better. It was a little better than what the auto did. Um, we are going to have to back off after that one, but I think that was uh, definitely good for me. I also got some levels out of it, which I am more than happy to take. Um, can I get, how far can my reinforcements get? No, they, not, not far enough, okay. What about the Houndmaster? Can you get, he could get up here. If I wanted to pull him in and try to finish off a bunch of these little guys. But I'm still gonna have cascading power to deal with. I don't know, I think I do want to finish these guys off. Hmm. Let's take those hero levels. First, uh... For her, I think I I don't... She doesn't really have any group buffs, so I'll probably keep turning her into more of a... of a mage fighter. I think giving her resistance would be helpful. Um, she also gets Gilded Magic, which was kind of a core part of... She's got the critical hit bonus, I think. Yeah, let's get her Gilded Magic now, because I might be able to... I might be able to guild units, and that would be super handy. And then for Steve, I think we're going to get that bolstering defense thing that I mentioned. Uh, wherever it is. Why can't I? Oh, bolstering support. There it is. Yep. Support abilities grant plus one bolster defense to affected units. We'll take that gladly. That makes natural rejuvenation really good. And then I think Jormag also leveled. All right. 
I'm thinking maybe Quickened Breath for Jormag. I use his Breath attack basically whenever I can. Could also get a free mark target on him. Um, another thing I may want to start thinking about doing is going down more support abilities and trying to get um, endurance training on everyone because that gives status resistance plus the 10 HP. I think endurance training is just incredible and I kind of would like every single one of my heroes to at least have that. Magecraft would benefit um, Jormag's breath attack. The accuracy doesn't matter, but I believe it does affect the status resistance. He doesn't have focused aggression yet. You know, I think I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna take some time and try to get some of those army buffs. I think those would be worth it because they're gonna benefit five out of six units in each army. So, what do we want for Jormag? Do I want restore? Which is honestly unlikely that I would ever use Jormag to do a healing when he could be killing something, but. Um, Inspiring Leader is good, but I don't think necessary for this game. I think my economy is going to be plenty strong, so I don't think I'm going to need that. Mark Target's always useful, but I think I'm just going to give Jormag a little extra health. He's only got 108. That's really not a lot. So I'm going to I'm gonna start upgrading Jormag and probably Steve and try to get Endurance Training on them. I might start say, taking all my heroes in that direction. Because along the way to endurance training, you get stuff like strength training and defense training, and that's more resistance for all your units uh, other than the heroes themselves. It's just really good. Okay. All right. Um, let me see who, uh, which other units I have here that are mounted. I think it's just the one Houndmaster. Uh, I believe I have more dragoons on the way but they're not really anywhere close yet honestly like I think I'm at a point now oh well I've already gotten part of the production of that mage lock done so it'll refund any golden mana you spent but the production will be lost you know what I'm fine with that I don't really need mage locks right now I think I'm at a point with all my race bonuses where I can just spam Dragoons and be happy with it. I think it'll be enough. Also get that War Foundry on the next turn, which is going to help out a lot with Draft. I'll be cranking these guys out in no time. Um, don't remember where you were or what you were doing, but may as well go back up here. Let's see, I have an extra healer oh. here to cover the one I lost. Uh -huh. Maybe I should have sent that other healer back down, but having extra units up near Vox Sabas or whatever the guy's name is fine too. Okay, we got a granary out here, which uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get the top first first town hall upgrade here, and then after I get that, I can work on the tavern, which that's going to take two farms, so I'll maybe as well pick up another farm now. Um, I kind of needed. These for foresters, but one could be a farm. Yeah, I'll, uh, I guess I'll make this one a farm. I don't know if it really matters much, but we'll build a farm there and that way we can go from the town hall upgrade straight to a tavern. They're getting grumpy again. Um, I really need anything to increase their stability. And actually, I think I want the tavern first because the town hall upgrade doesn't increase city stability. Oh, wait, no, I have to have the town hall first. The tavern, that's a prerequisite for the tavern. Okay. Well, that's fine. They'll just have to be grumpy for a little while. Whatever. They'll deal with it. Uh, all right. Well, let's get a hound master out here. So we've got one extra unit. Actually, before I do that, I want to take a quick look and see what the uh, odds are for this battle. It's another low risk. Um, with Steve's healing, I can probably patch everybody up pretty quickly. But Jormag or Basrakhan is still going to be casting spells. So uh -huh. there is that. Um, I want Steve's army to be in the middle for this one. 
I think you can accomplish that by having his army be the one that's actually attacking. So I'm going to do that and shuffle around because Steve can move up and then I could use his Dragoon to launch the attack. Yeah. All right, let's, let's see if I can finagle this. These guys could go here. Jormag's army moves back to here. Steve moves here. And then do this. And the reason I want Steve to be in the middle for this, I'm gonna just see what the auto does, but there's not really that many scary units in this fight. Wow, I say that and then my entire middle stack dies. All right, well, I guess we're doing this one. Now Steve's in the middle and the reason I want him to be in the middle is I can pull everyone in from the sides and give a huge number of people bolstered defense. And I think he just stun locked them again. No, he used something else. What did he do? He cast time stop. Wait, no, he did. Okay, he did. Yeah, he, he stunned him again. All right, well, you know what? That just gives me more time to to get everyone together. I'm going to have this guy patch himself up because he is on the verge of death. And I don't want a cascading power to take him out. He only ever uses that time stop spell on the very first turn of combat. I've never seen him. I don't think I've ever seen him do it any other time. All right, we'll get you in the middle there to provide some defense because we are bunching everyone up here, which is generally speaking, not a good idea, especially against mages. But um, I can provide some extra shields for everyone. So it'll probably be fine. Uh, that fairy desperately needs some healing. I think I might actually, I'm gonna move her as far as she can go. And then I'm going to go ahead and drop this guy's healing on her now. It's got a two-turn cooldown, so I may as well. Um, I need that fairy. They're a very good source of damage output. All right. I want Jormag kind of as close to the center here as possible, because I think I don't want to move them when Steve does his big heal on the next turn. And I do want to, because I want to summon an elemental. Um, I'm going to sit with that for now. He may throw another spell out, but he's going to run out of casting points soon. Although I might actually not be fighting in Spelljammer covered territory. Oh wait, no I am. Okay, we're still good. Oh frick. Oh, I didn't see the mimic in there. Okay. Now we've got a problem. Now I'm seeing why I died. Okay, um, well, I guess two can play at this game. But we need to kill that thing immediately, like right away. So uh, first off, Steve, um, I do need you to heal everyone. That's now more important than ever. And I'm gonna give them all bolstering defense. And then pretty much everybody else is going to have the sole purpose of killing that thing. Oh man, I, I was so good about avoiding that in a battle a few episodes ago and totally missed, dropped the ball on this one. I don't think I can even crushing earth him. So yeah, we're kind of stuck there. All right, no, don't panic. You know, it's bad, but I don't want to panic. That's the worst thing I can do right now. We just need to get as many people in Steve's heal as we can. So we've got that passive regeneration. Right now, this seems like the target spot for it. I just need to get my, um, I need to get these guys into it somehow, which I think I'm gonna do, I, I'm gonna, probably gonna need her shooting at this guy. So I'm gonna move them here. I'm gonna move them here. I'm gonna move them here. This guy can come here. He can't really do anything else that useful on this turn. Um, who else can Steve fit in here? A couple units out front, uh, if I wanted to move some units out front. Actually, the bird would be a good choice. If I want to move him forward a bit to that spot, I believe. It would still be in Steve's reach. 
little difficult to see here, but yes, he would be. That opens up room for the fairies, which I really want to get in on this. And these guys here, which can help protect the fairies. And then this guy, who can still do his shocking phase. All right, Steve, you may do this. Oh, look at all the green. Makes me happy. Okay, now let's shift gears and go into damage dealing mode. Uh -huh. I am probably going to just designate target on this thing. Either that or I'll use um, mental mark. Does he have status effect immunity? Just to burning. Okay. That's fine. I wasn't planning on setting him on fire anyway. That actually benefits me, I think, because I'm, I think Sundered the Earth can... It deals damage in a 4x line. Gets three Sundered defense. All right. Him Sundering my defense doesn't hurt me that badly because he doesn't have a lot of units that do physical damage. So I'm, I'm kind of okay with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to designate target on this guy. He's too dangerous to be left alive. I believe he has all the stacks of empowered from... Sl no, he actually doesn't have that. No, he doesn't. He didn't inherit all the slaughtered empowerment stacks that I have, which is currently 18. All right. I want him dead, and I believe we can get it. So I want the Balor to go here, I think. How far can he reach? If I go one more, I could get that pikeman back there. Which I am fine with. Oh, but then I don't get the... Um, these guys here, which I think I would rather get. He's got, his attack's a weird, it's like kind of a weird cone. All right. And I also gotta bear in mind that this guy will, um, will turn back into a mirror mimic after I kill him, which will require one additional thing to kill. Jormag can get up there and possibly freeze him. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and mark him, which, oh crap, I didn't use Steve to do, because I'm just terrible about that. Too much freaking out about trying to react and not actually using all my abilities. <clears throat> um... What does Meteor Arrows do again? Eight fire damage to target and adjacent energies has... Okay, um... I might port this guy. No, not yet. I want Jormag to do their big attack first. Uh... I'm gonna go ahead and inflict wet on him now with her. Okay, that was good, good damage there. Jormag can then maybe have a higher chance of freezing. I want to move this guy out, but I kind of don't want him to be in Jormag's path either. He does have a mobilizing phase. I may just use that on this turn instead. But I want Jormag right here, I think, if I know the path the breath attack takes. Yeah. Okay, then the mirror mimic comes back. That should be easy enough to finish off. My Balor is better than yours. Uh, Alright, now I probably want to go ahead and do a mobilizing phase. Um, if I do it there and manage to... Well, no, I can't actually immobilize anyone. I forgot about that. And it doesn't really do much damage either. But I think I can end in defense mode. Yeah, and so I can still prevent these guys from doing much. 
I could punch one to death, but I think I'd rather lock two down. All right, um, can you kill him? Yes, you can. Excellent. Uh, yeah, just go ahead and do that. You can land the shot. You crazed. I should have moved him forward to make sure he wouldn't screw it up. Fine. Uh, these guys can probably, or anybody who can even just spit on him could finish him off. Hmm. What about shocking phase to here? He still won't do it. I'm gonna do that anyway. Maybe I shouldn't have. That's gonna end up hurting my that guy more than I thought it would. Does anyone have like an AOE? Or we'll just kill him with a with a dang dogs. You know what? That's fine. Just go get him, buddy. Good boy. All right. Then I can just pick this guy off there. Got these guys flanking around, probably going to cause some trouble. Let's see the fairy. The units are kind of all stuck up on each other here. Um, I want to get... See, you're just a lesser storm spirit, so I'm not as worried about you. You know what? I know that's a pikeman, but this is a tier 4 shield unit. We're just going to move there and get in the way. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot the shield guy there because the damage will splash out to adjacent enemy units and then I'm going to run him away if I can get him away. The fairy is just not gonna be any help on this turn. They don't have enough movement, so it's fine. Um, I'm gonna get these guys up here and Probably try to, I don't know, hit the... May try to get a flank attack on those pikes. Although I think they're in defense mode. Because the Balor didn't hit them. Vanguard mode, I believe they are. Where is that located? Shield wall, yeah. Alright. So I can't flank them. I think I'll probably just shoot the guy in the middle, honestly. Just soften this group up as quickly as I can. Dang, these Dragoons are awesome. And I think with this guy over here... Um... I want to see how much damage I can do to this thing back here. It won't be enough to... Yeah, I don't... It's not going to be enough to really be super helpful. Although I only have a 50% chance of hitting the other one, so... I think um, I, I'll just move them forward and shoot the pikeman anyway. I know he's on defense, but it'll still do a lot of damage and cut down on his damage output pretty substantially. Then I'm going to move this guy here to guard the one that's weak. Um, I can move these guys up front and center to just mark something. Probably you. It's fine. I've kind of been ignoring this army on the right side, which I may come to regret here in a moment. Let's back you guys up. Hopefully they'll go after that dog here on this turn. Who's next? Uh, it's mostly just these Dragoons that don't actually run out of movement, technically. Oh, uh, I got this big guy. You know what? You can punch now. Yeah, just get rid of him. There, low morale. That'll hopefully help a little. Oh, I thought that was my Balor's health dropping for a second. It was the dog. I was like, what? <laughs> I don't think they kill anything on this turn. 
Uh, maybe. Okay, they might get that guy. There's a fumble. Oh, he's gonna be close. Oh, there he goes. Oh, seven Earth Elemental. He's a great shield unit while he lasted. I could really use more, honestly. I could use another solid shield unit option. All right, well, let's see what we can do here. I try to stack more kills for the Balor if I can. This thing, I think, just refuged. Yeah, it's refuge, so I can't do anything about it. It does mean the fairies could hit this guy, but this guy is hard to hit with range, so I'm going to just flank it with these guys and kill it. All right, we'll get the fairy away from this dang thing. I hate these guys. In fact, I'll get everybody away from him on this turn, because I can't actually do anything to him on this turn. Uh, I want this eagle right in the middle of all the enemies, causing trouble, particularly for range attackers. Uh, I want you... You know what? This guy out here, he needs to not be allowed to continue his shenanigans. Um, Balor can't quite kill him. Steve's probably got a decent shot on something. Steve, gosh, he's the master of almost being able to kill. You know what? Just mark it. All right, then shoot it. Then heal somebody? Actually, I already moved most of the units that I wanted to heal out of range. I guess I could heal this guy. Yeah, go ahead and do that. Okay, Jormag. Um, Jormag's got their tail bash. That could be fun here. I'll go here and do that. I think I'm going to have this guy go hit him. So that the bird can come over here and interfere with more stuff. I would like to get the Balor another kill here, if that's possible. Um, it is possible, it looks like. And I could get a Fiend out of it, too. What if I go here? Yep. Alright, she can fry whoever she wants, basically. Um, I'm going to... Let's see about this guy right here, since he doesn't have anything guarding him at the moment. Do as much damage to him and mark him as much as I can. Uh, let's go ahead and drop a metal mark on this group. She may be able to kill something now. Yeah, she can kill whatever she wants. And you can just get away from that thing. Yeah, I'm just going to soften up one of these guys with the fairy and use her to kill the one thing that I'm not guarding. And the eagle, I don't really want to have it sit there, so I'm going to have it go here. Oh, he's running. All right. I would rather him not actually get away. So, Steve, what's your shot there? Why is it not telling me the odds? Han Solo reference there just popped into my head. <laughs> Didn't even intend for that. Um, I guess it's probably 100? I don't know. Holy crap! I didn't catch how much damage that was, but it was probably a lot! <laughs> but nice shot, Steve! Nobody gets to run away. Alright, these guys should have their shots. Um, 
I think tracking everybody down should be easy enough. Well, I may use melee. Yeah. Especially the Balor. We, we, he needs to eat. I'm gonna just disrupt their path out and try to get as many kills for the Balor as I can. They may be burning. I don't know if that'll count as the Balor's kill. Um, and I'm just gonna body block this guy. Oh, I can't quite get him. All right. Well, we'll see how far he gets. Um, I can, uh, he won't get away, so, and let's see, these guys down here, they can just finish him off, that's fine. All right, I'm just gonna go to the next turn, and basically the goal here is just try to get some extra kills for the Balor if I can. I think this thing is a once per battle ability. No, it is. No, he can use it as much as he wants, but I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to sell or settle for one. That's okay. Those Houndmasters, are, have, even against more powerful units, are still doing a respectable amount of damage for being a Tier 2. Alright, uh, you know what? I'm happy with that. Uh, we got... We lost our Earth Elemental Shield, boy, but um, we did plenty of damage. I am I'm totally okay with this outcome. I'm going to need some patch-up time, though. Um, I don't need that Inferno Puppy. We don't need him. So I'm going to back off. Oh. Fall back a bit here. and regroup and get more uh, guns on the front line, I think, for now. I do I do want to think about good shield unit options because that Earth Elemental was nice to just park and get in the way. And I would like to have... Man, I would love to have more of those Eagle Riders, honestly. Those would be awesome. Got some hero remains to sort through. Nothing good here. Oh, new Empire Development Skill. Which one did I just unlock? I'm getting darn close to Martial Ancestry, which is one of the best in the game. Don't think I want anything right now. Let's see you. Oh, you have a plus five health plate and a plus three resistance headgear. That's... That's pretty nice. And a plus four lightning resistance ring. I think we could make... I am sure I could make use of some of that stuff. We'll sell those remains. All right. Uh, maybe Steve could use some of that. Jormag too. Actually, Jormag could take that ring. I do kind of like Jormag having true sight, but I think he might already be getting that. I think I gave him true sight earlier from one of his upgrades. Hang on, I, I want to look at his hero upgrades. Does he have um, heightened senses? Plus two vision range, plus two sensing range, plus two vision, plus two sensing. Uh, no, he doesn't actually have true sight, which is interesting. I don't think he does anyway, unless I'm missing it. Uh, I like Steve's armor, and you know what? His helmet's good. Um, and that's good. What about my other hero? She doesn't have a ring at all yet. I do like her crown, but I will give her that ring, I think. And what was the other thing I got? It was a piece of armor. So really I'm just getting the ring out of this, but that's fine. Um, 
Yeah, you know what? That's fine. She's just got a bunch of extra lightning resistance now. She's going to end up being closer to the fight most of the time anyway, so having the extra resistance on her is fine. And let's see, the Jormag I'll, I'll keep with the True Sight Ring. Um, and then Steve doesn't need the armor or the helmet. None of those guys need the helmet right now, even though it is a very good helmet. I wish I could put it on Jormag, but uh, I don't think it'd fit the head. Whew, okay, that was quite something. Um, kind of want to go to the next turn at least to uh -huh. kind of see where Blue repositions. Uh -huh. uh, we'll move somebody uh -huh. up. Probably want to, you know what, let's move one of these guys up. And I want to take a look and see how production's coming along. So yeah, we've got one more turn for another Dragoon. I need all the Dragoons on the front line that I can get right now. All the Dragoons just going straight to the west. Um, no sign of the dragon invasion yet that I presume is coming. Um, I, I considered moving up on to Father's Rest on this turn, but I want more Mage Banes before I really throw myself into the into the Beast Slayer over here. Uh, yeah. I already have a decent number of Mage Banes, but I would like to like replace that Mage Lock with a Mage Bane. Just, I, or not Mage Banes, Watchers, sorry. I want more Watchers over here before I just throw myself at this guy. He's already rebuilding a decent stack there. He's got like a tier four and a hero. I guess those are just tier twos, it's not scary. But I don't know what else he has. And I don't want, the last thing I want is to make a mistake over here that causes me to have to pull resources from over here. Basra Khan is still the biggest threat. And um, and I want to focus all my attention on dealing with him. So unless I have a really good reason to believe that I've got this in the bag over here, um, I'm not going to worry about it. One thing I would like to do is... I might try scrying enemy on their leader. I can't do it on this turn though, because I've already used all my casting. We'll see if I have room for it after I'm done with the with the spell cast. And then I think this guy's fine where he's at. I might even move him forward a bit. I would think Bosrakhan would show up here pretty soon, but I did just wipe out a good chunk of his army. He could mess me up if he does have enough stuff to pull in and do a giant retaliatory strike. But I don't think he's going to... No, his turn's already over. I might be able to initiate a siege on Obscurum here in a minute. I just need backup. Oh wait, why didn't I move more units up out of here to fill in those gaps? I guess it's because I was planning on moving these guys back to meet up with them, so... Uh, what do we got here? Either I just get gold. Um, I don't really need draft in DC. I need draft in Vegas. Or I could get a mate. I'll just take the money. Why, why would you take a single mage lock when you could take 381 gold? Uh, all right. We have that big war foundry thing is done over here in Vegas. Um, and I know there's more that I can build here. I want, I, I got the war uh, foundry. Now I want the great foundry, which gets bonuses per adjacent mine. That is going to go probably here or here. It would need to be either where that forester is or Hmm. Yeah, either where the forester is or where this mountain is here. I need to let me let me take a quick look and see here cuz I've got a couple other buildings that I want to fit in. This one only gets bonuses from adjacent quarries and this one gets bonuses from a variety of things. So 
I could build the Great Foundry here, which would tag two mines, and then I could put like a quarry over here and fit the Rune Carver camp in down here later on. The Rune Carver camp could kind of fit over here whenever I'm ready for it, but that one's not as important. I want the uh, Great Foundry more than anything, because that's more draft. The mob camp is also more draft. Although it's not a lot. Tier 1 units are cheaper by 20%. That doesn't really help me. Yeah, it's mostly just getting the Great Foundry in here, I think, is the important part. So I'm going to... Probably need to wait until the next time Vegas grows. Or just build it where the Forester is right now, because I don't really need the Forester anymore. Oh, actually, that's a good spot, because I can turn this into a mine and get one more mine out of it. That's a better that's a better spot. So yeah, I will go ahead and start doing that. Great Foundry goes. Yeah, yeah, I want it here. It'll benefit from that, but it'll eventually get another one from this. In fact, I'm gonna turn this into a mine now. It is worth noting that I do give up some draft from the foresters that I'm losing, but um, I can kind of make that back later. I don't think the foresters themselves count for like a lot of draft. It's like, oh wait, no, they don't give you any. Okay, never mind. I was getting a regular forester confused with the mob camp. So yeah, this is just an unquestionably good good decision for Vegas. So yeah, I'm fine with that. Um, all right, so as for Jormag, ooh, wow, I healed up pretty nicely. Um, I'm gonna move back just far enough to reinforce with fresh troops and get every army back to max stacks. So let's see, I've got, I'm gonna have to wait a turn for him, but I can get, I've got plenty of backup here. And I'm probably just going to throw a bunch of mage locks in there. Maybe, um, maybe a couple mercenaries just to get melee in, but mostly going to be mage locks, I think. So how far can they move? Let's, let's move up two mage locks just about as far as they can go. Maybe get them to, it's, it's going to be right around the serpent's lair where everyone can kind of get together, so that's fine. How many total do I need? I need four units to replace what I've lost. Yeah, okay, four units. So I'll take two mage locks, we'll take uh, maybe one pikeman. They have their uses. And then, uh, I don't, I don't know about the cannon, like, I think having one cannon is okay, and I did lose one in the last battle, so I'll bring one, because they can break guard if positioned well. But I don't really want any more than that. They're just not that good for fighting this guy. Uh, okay, so Jormag's army could probably use... Whose army needs uh, mage locks the most? Or melee the most. Probably hers, actually. Yeah, I'll put the... Yeah, I'll do that. I will put the... Um, put the pikeman with you. And then I will put... Let's use you here. Move Steve here. We'll put... Uh, one gun guy with you. And then Steve's army can have the cannon. And Jorah Mag's army can have another gun. Yep, okay, we'll do that. Mage lock there. Mage lock there. Uh -huh. Cannon with Steve, or not. Cannon can't move to Steve. Cannon is slow and useless, okay. Fine, uh, we'll put the other gun with Steve. Or the fairy, that's fine too. He could have the fairy. The Jormag can have the cannon. All right, that works. Uh -huh. That at least 
fills out the ranks again until we can get more Dragoons. But I think I'm going to uh, start sieging Obscurum and actually start trying to take away some of this guy's cities. And I guess I should probably move everything as far forward as I possibly can down here. While leaving them behind, safely tucked behind the walls. Okay. And then I'll move this guy up with this group and they'll have access to a healer if it's needed. I kind of like the layout of those armies for now, but... I'll just leave him there. Um, yeah, this guy's rebuilding pretty quick, it looks like. I'm hoping he takes another swing at me. I would like to just keep knocking him down a peg while I deal with Jormag or invading Pazarkhan. Uh All right. I think, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. I know I said I was going to try to make this episode a little shorter, but those... Those battles did take a minute. Um, oh, wait. One thing I want to do before uh, wrapping this up. New Empire development skill available. I want to see just how much extra gold this gets me. So keep an eye on my numbers up here. And see just how much extra gold. Yeah, that's like about 250 extra gold. I didn't actually check the mana. I didn't. I, I forgot the mana. But um, yeah, I'm making... I'm making an absurd amount of money every turn. Okay, basically Vegas can make Dragoons for forever, <laughs> which is great. Uh, I could probably, I wanna get luxury markets. Oh man, if I could get luxury markets, that would be awesome. That would be absolutely awesome. If that pops up, I have to get it because if I got luxury markets, I could buy two units a turn out of Vegas at a reduced cost, I think. And just, and I, that would like triple the rate at which I'm getting new Dragoons out into the field. And I could absolutely swarm the enemies with these guys, which would be fantastically fun. Um, yeah, so I'll keep an eye out for that. Let's uh, quickly kind of cycle through some units here. So we got the Dragoon, Denver got the Tower of True Sight, so nothing sneaking up on Denver. Um, Denver can also snag that mint now. There's really no reason not to. More gold income is more gold income. Vegas, I also kind of want to have the tower, or not Vegas, Texas. I've kind of wanted Texas to have the Tower of True Sight for a while. I feel like with these infestations over here, it would be nice to have a little extra vision range to see what they're cooking. Um, and Earth Shatter is ready, which I am going to use in Texas right here in a spot that I've been wanting to use that for a while so the next time texas grows i can grab that spot and then build the uh, uh whatever i was going to build in at the great foundry i think yeah all right um i guess probably best to summon more watchers no i want one more earth shatter there is another spot i want to break open with that Free city declared war, rally. Okay, we're at the end of this turn. And as such, I think this is a great time to wrap it up. So thanks for watching, guys. I know it was just a couple battles this turn, but it was large, important battles. And it, although I lost some stuff, I think it was overall a pretty big net gain for me. Knocked out quite a few heroes too, so I'm happy about that. Hopefully uh, we can get a good siege going versus Basra Khan and at least knock these cities out. And then maybe turn our attention south and go after where I suspect more of his key cities are. His capital is probably in this region somewhere, so it's kind of what I'm guessing for now. If I do see him again, I'll probably... Oh, wait, I was going to do... Um... You know what? Hang on. Cancel the Earth Shatter. I've been putting off Scry Enemy for a while. I want... Since I can see gold right now, I want Scry Enemy on gold. Spell block... By... You know what? I made that mistake in the last episode, too. All right, fine. I'm, no, I'm gonna make use of that eventually, I swear. All right, we'll just go back to what we were doing. All right, so uh, yeah, thanks for watching everybody. I appreciate it, hope you enjoyed the episode and I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Have a good one. Special thanks to all my Patreon supporters, including tier three supporters, Blitz, Brayden, Dawson Horner, Jimbro, Roderick, Sarah Feingold, and Tibian Army. Thanks so much, everybody.